Hi everybody, Gem here and welcome to my colouring cave. As you can see, today I have my scrawler box. Uh, this is the February box that was dispatched a few days ago and it's luckily enough landed in my lap. So, unlike the last video, I have not looked in this box at all. I do not know what's in it and I wanted to share the the exploration and experience with everybody. Uh, so, I think I just want to get stuck in. I have cut the tape already just to make it easy for me to get into. Um, I've explained this before, but basically, scroller scroller the box. <laughs> Scrawler Box is a UK uh, subscription art supply box. Uh, you pay £15 every month and they send you out a box of goodies of varying shapes and sizes. You never know what you're going to get and the contents vary from month to month. So it's a really nice way to explore different art supplies without spending a fortune. And if you do find something that you like, you can go out and buy some more. So, without further ado... Ooh... Every month they do include a few things as standard. One is something to draw on, usually a sheet of paper or a few sheets of paper. Last month they supplied me, and that was the January box, with this notebook, sort of sketchbook type thing. Uh, you don't necessarily get one of these every month. And as you can see, it's paper that we've got. And the paper is it feels to me like ugh, it's not quite watercolour paper, so, uh, but it is very, yeah, I don't know if you can see the texture of it there. So that's interesting. Oh, this is another thing that's included every month and this is artwork by a featured artist. And from what I've gathered, they have created the piece using the things that have come in the box. So this looks like we've got some kind of watercolour in here because you can see that that's exactly what it is and it's absolutely beautiful. If you turn over onto the back, it tells you about the featured artist and also some of their social media type stuff if you want to go and check out some more of their work. This is great for a little bit of inspiration. Um, and plus as well, I just think they're pretty and I like to have them sort of, you know, floating about in my, uh, my colouring cave. So, oh, we've got a rip. Oh, I can see, look what I can see. Oh, this is exciting. Again, every month, also receive your scroller box sticker and you can stick that wherever you like. Um, we'll just leave that at that. And also as well, we have this little card and on the card is details of the scroller challenge. And basically they give you a prompt every month and the idea is to use only the supplies that are in the box to create something that covers this theme. So the theme is quiet morning. Hmm, interesting. That's exciting. Oh, <laughs> what is this? It is a Faber-Castell water brush. Wow, that looks interesting. Um, this is quite funny actually because in one of my uh, my recent videos I was ranting and raving about the water brush uh, brushes that I use and I was saying that I've no interest in looking to find another one because I'm really happy with them. <laughs> so let's get this out. Oh, this out the way just now. Oh, oh, a bit of plastic went flying there. Come out. I love how they make these things really difficult to get into. Okay, it's quite dinky and it's got a weird sort of flat, you know, like pointy, if I turn it that way that's better, kind of like pointy edge on it and anyway, oh, um, yeah that's obviously that's quite hard just now, that's kind of crunchy, oh, crunchy and new. So I'm assuming that this bit unscrews and, mm, the water will go in there and you fill this up and I think it's the same principle as the ones I've already got you can um oh I don't know actually because normally I'm going to show you my other one just so that you can see a comparison let's find it oh here's one here that I've been using earlier on today okay these are the Kuretake brushes that I normally use um that's the fine the fine tip one and basically you unscrew this as we've just seen with the, the, the Faber-Castell one. Um, but this has a 
a sort of reservoir and this little cap with a hole in it and what it means is, I'm just going to put this back on in case any water leaks out, but basically you can dip it in a glass of water and squeeze this part of the barrel um, and it sucks the water up and then you can screw it back together. It looks to me like this one because it's such a large hole that you would be better trying to pour something in there or using something like a syringe to fill it up. Um, I do have a glass of water over here that I keep um, to, you know, to sip out of when I'm doing these videos because your mouth does get really dry. I might forego it and, <laughs> and try and fill this up. Um, it might not be such a good idea. Okay, let, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go in the interest of science. So here is my, uh, my glass of water and I wonder what happens if I just did that. Now I'm just squeezing and then letting go. And that has taken water in. Um, there you go, you can see. Give it a sugar. For anybody that's not Scottish, sugar means to shake or if something's wobbly, so you give it a sugar go like that. Okay, so at least that's got a little bit of water in it. I don't think I'll be drinking out of that glass now, right enough. Just have to go with a dry mouth. I'll screw this back on. There we go. Okay, so... Oh, right. Oh, everything's wet. Okay, so we've got a water brush, so that makes the assumption that this little... Um, box in here may have some sort of watercolour type medium in it. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Oh. Faber Castell Gold Faber Aqua Pencils. I know nothing about these pencils. Gold Faber? Gold Faber? See, I would say Faber Castell, but Gold Faber. Anybody? Anyone? Nah, you can let me know in the comments. Um, okay, now let's try and get these open now then. Uh, see if I can find a craft knife. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's exciting. I love these boxes. They're such good fun. Okay, let's get this off. Okay, so there are 12 pencils in here. And uh, all it says in the front is watercolour pencils. So we kind of figured that out anyway, didn't we? We're not stupid. They are in this little tin. It's quite a pretty little tin. Oh. Oh, and it hinges. That's good. I always like that. I always think the Faber-Castell tins are quite pretty. And we've got a little leaflet. Creative studio quality made in Germany. Okay, so we've got everything in like a squillion languages. Interestingly there, there is uh, the colour chart and it tells you uh, the different sizes that you get and um, whether or not the pencil comes in each size set. So the maximum looks like 48. 48, 36, 20, it helps if you turn it around, Gem, so everyone can see it. There you are. Uh, yeah, 12, 24, 36, and 48 is the different tin sizes, and obviously we have got the 12. One of, oh, One of the things I like to do is sniff them. <laughs> yeah, they don't really smell much, okay. They look quite pretty though. So let's have a look at one of these pencils. So they have a dipped end, so the colour I'm hoping would correspond to the core. And it says Gold Faber or Gold Faber, 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 whatever. Gold Faber Aqua, and then obviously Faber Castell, Faber Castell. And there is a barcode and 115, which I am really, really hoping is the colour. And I'm just going to look at this chart here. Yeah. Okay, so this is 115, which is dark cadmium orange. Happy days, that makes me happy. So that's kind of cool. Well, okay, so that's quite interesting. Let's see what else is in the box. Oh, my favourite. I love these erasers. I'm going to keep this one as a spare because the one I have is probably about this size and rounded at the corners. Um, so there's plenty of life left in it yet. And these are, uh, I don't even know if I want to open this. I'll maybe find my other one and show you my other one um, so that you can see what it does because I really don't want to open that one. And of course I have no idea where my other one is. I'm moving stuff out there. This is my drawing pencil case and I love this pencil case. It came as part of a, a set that my fiance bought me for my Christmas with a satchel in the same distressed leather and I just love it. Okay, there we go. So this is a new one of these. And you can see mine's, uh, mine's a little bit dinkier now, but I have had this an awfully long time. These erasers are brilliant. Um, they don't leave any marks on the paper whatsoever and they do erase pretty well, but I'll give you a demonstration of that just shortly. 
Okay, so at least whatever we're doing, there must be pencil and or maybe there isn't a drawing pencil. Maybe there's oh right, okay, hang on. Yes, we have Oh, Statler Mars Lumograph Aquarelle. Now that would suggest to me that, that you can also watery colory maybe with this. And it's a 4B, so it is a drawing pencil of descriptions. Uh right, okay, so that makes me a little bit happier knowing that when I'm gonna do the challenge I can draw something and I can erase something before I have to start faffing about with watercolour pencils, which I am absolutely not experienced in at all. So that could be quite interesting. Okay, and last but not least, well, I think last but not least, yeah, you always get some sort of sweetie. Um, what I found is they are, they tend to be uh, sweeties from the UK, candy for you guys over the pond. This, uh, Feenies are not British. But this is a fizzy bubblegum watermelon, so I think that's going to be pretty good. But we'll uh, we'll worry about that later. Okay, so that it is it. The box is empty. So that is what we have to work with. Now, on the back of this card that gives you the prompt, it does actually tell you about everything that's in the box. So I'm just going to have a quick read through this and see if there's anything exciting that I can tell you. Uh, okay, so the Aqua Pencils. Soft, intense colour lay down and outstanding colour brilliance using either dry or wet techniques. So again, just the same as a normal pencil, you can use them uh, with a pencil drawing. But if you want to get a little bit more creative with your water brush then you can make it sort of watercolor ish esque that kind of thing fully water soluble pencils a great pigmentation blah 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 watercolor effects okay the water brush it says it's lovely integrated grooves and wedge design on the cap can be used for scratch and scraping techniques now that's interesting that's why it's got a funky cap on it when i was saying about this this sort of uh pointy section so you can use that to and make your drawings more interesting. Okay, the Statler Mars Lumograph pencil, remarkably break resistant. It's funny, they all say that, but are they really? Mm, we'll see. Soft graphite pencil draws and erases easily. Uh, eraser we've kind of talked about. Leaves no discoloration of itself on the paper. That is a much more succinct way of saying what I was trying to say earlier. It is phthalate, phthalate and latex free. And, oh, we have something missing. Oh, no, it's not. Um, they're the, <laughs> at the bottom here, they're supposed to be a sharpener. Um, I found it. And it's also a Statler sharpener. And it says on it, graphite. Graphite, used for graphite. It's quite heavy, actually. I've got a thing about sharpeners. I like heavy sharpeners. Um, that feels quite sturdy. It feels uh, v very German engineered. It feels quite robust. So that's always always good to know, isn't it? Sharpen standard size pencils, blah, blah, blah. Clear and accurate lines. Okay, well, we'll see. I think we'll be the judge of that, won't we, guys? Okay. So let's, first things first, I want to see the sharpener in action. How sad is that? <laughs> oh my. That's pointy. That's really pointy. I, th I think I'd be frightened to use that. It's definitely, um, it's leaving a little mess. Uh, okay, so that uh, that's giving you quite a long point. Uh, see, to be honest, that's not really my my bag as it were i'm not i'm not into big long pointy points however uh it looks pretty good it looks pretty clean so yeah okay statler good shout so now i have a very sharp pencil um i'm going to i was going to get out my little uh, notebook just to sort of try these things out and see what they look like on paper however i may try out the pencil just in my little notepad if i can find it oh here we go Ooh. Okay, and when it comes to the watercolour pencils, I think I'll dig out some watercolour paper and try them on that so we can get a bit of swoosh, swoosh, swoosh going on and see what they look like. So, oh. Okay, the, the lead seems quite sturdy, although it's it's got a very long point on it. It's It seems quite strong. It feels strong. It's quite a smooth pencil. It really is. It's quite... It, it feels quite silky. Um, but... Also, obviously being a, a 4B, it's quite dark, which is fine. Um, 
but yeah, that's that that's a nice pencil. I quite like that. Ooh. Okay. You can see as well there, I mean, I'm, that's me, I'm pressing quite hard and it seems to be keeping its point quite well. It's not not disappearing at a great rate of knots, which is which is nice for a, a, a B pencil. I wonder how light I can go. Ooh. I'm the kind of person that takes an inclination to draw and I just pick up the first pencil to hand. I don't really have a favourite drawing pencil, uh, so... It's quite nice to try out different ones and just know that, you know, I can I can keep in, in my drawing pencil case, I can keep a handful of ones that are nice to draw with and I know if I just stick my hand and pull one out, I'll get, you know, something that's that's good. Yeah, that feels quite good. I, li I like this pencil. This, this is a good pencil. The Statler stuff generally is really good quality. I, I'm a fan of it anyway. Uh, so that just backs that theory up, which is real nice. Right, I'm going to dig out some watercolour paper, if you bear with me one moment. Oh my. I was going to do it on this, but I think I'll keep this for the scroller challenge. That would be... I might change my mind. You never know. Okay. This, this is really big. Whoa. Hello, paper. Okay, this is proper, like... I don't even know what this pad came from. Let's have a look. Yep, this is uh, 300. This is from WH Smith, which is one of our stationers in the UK. And it is... Uh, 300 GSM acid free paper and it is A3 so it's pretty big oh sorry oh nearly wrecked the place there sorry if that makes you feel a bit seasick guys there we go okay oh it's gone all funny hello oh there we go we're focused again that's nice good to hear it so let's wang open these pencils Pencils. Right, now first things first, I always go for the red, the red pencil. Now obviously this is going to be quite grainy on watercolour paper, paper when using it as a pencil. So I'm going to just flick over on this little notepad as well and show you what it looks like on smoother paper. Um, just so that you can see. These are really soft, these pencils. So you can see there, it's a, there's a lot smoother lay down there. Um, obviously, as I say, because this is a watercolour paper, it's not going to be quite the same thing. Yeah, they, they, they feel very um, prisma colory. They're quite buttery. Um, and the, the points going on it really quickly. I mean, I've just done those two little scribbles there. I'll just compare this to one of the, the other pre-sharpened ones. You can see that that's the tips off it straight away which is absolutely fine and it probably helps in terms of watercolour pencils I mean I don't know okay pre-filled with the little skittle I had earlier let's see if I can get this bad boy going I always seem to like to do this on the back of my hand I'm assuming it's the same as the other one we'll give it a squeeze whoa okay okay no squeezing <laughs> oops <laughs> okay you really don't need to squeeze and that water is Oh wow, would you look at that? Okay, see this is the problem I have with water brushes. The see trying to control the flow of water. Um yeah, see I'm getting far too much now. That's really, really wet. Oh wow. However, I have to say the pigmentation in those is absolutely fabulous. But that is really, really, really wet. Um maybe just because I squeezed it too hard initially. Um I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, this isn't going to go well, I don't think. I'm just going to grab a bit of tissue. Right, all I'm doing is uh, wiping off the end here. Maybe we'll get better control now that I've stopped squeezing it like a maniac. Okay, let's try with the blue. I really like. Obviously, again, with this being watercolour paper, it will take the water. Um, right, I'm not, I've not squeezed it at all this time. Okay, that is absolutely lovely. It's destroying those grainy lines and I feel like I've got quite a lot of texture um, and the water is flowing considerably better now. Oh yeah. Okay, I can, I can live with that. Yeah, that feels, normally if you do this on the back of your hand, you can feel the water flow 
um, and it gives you a good gauge of how wet or dry the brush is. Obviously, if it feels quite dry, you can squeeze, but I'm, I'm actually quite scared to squeeze this because it just seems to come flying out. But I do notice with this, if you look at it compared to the Kuretake brush, this has this chamber here, and when you squeeze here, the water scoots down, but it has to filter through this sort of, I think it might be sponge, I can't actually tell, um, but obviously that if you squeeze really hard, it slows the water down slightly before it gets to the nib. I don't think this has got this unless it's hidden somewhere in here, um, but I've got a, f a sneaking suspicion. That's why when I squeezed it, it went absolutely bananas and went everywhere. One can assume, we might investigate, we might try and take it to bits in a wee while and we can find out. Okay, so let's, um, well, this is a nice colour. make this a little bit darker down here. I am literally just playing about with this. Obviously, this is not expressing any of my artistic talents at all. I just want to, to really, just to show you, like showcase and see, uh, you know, what, what everything looks like. This one is one, two, five, which I have a funny feeling might be a uh, sort of fuchsia color. Middle purple pink, my bad, middle purple pink. That's one thing I have to say, I use polychromos pencils and I absolutely love polychromos pencils, however, their names absolutely suck. I think it's just because they don't translate well from German into English, because uh, German uh, language, they do take lots of little words and shove them into one big word. Um, so obviously when you translate it back, that's, that's why you get things like middle purple pink, which is fine, but... You know, you look at some of the other pencils, the Crayola pencils, they have a, they have a colour called Fuzzy Wuzzy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, anyway, back to what we were doing. So, again, I've not squeezed the barrel at all, and it feels a little bit dry. However, I shall persevere. Uh, oh, no, maybe not. Okay, I'm going to squeeze a tiny bit. Okay, and that has actually plopped out. You've seen that happening. Uh, yeah, I don't like this water brush. Obviously, there is every chance it's just because I am not skilled at all <laughs> with these things uh, that someone with a bit more care and control and probably a little bit of practice might get on better. Uh, but that's that's far too wayward for my liking. Even a tiny little squeeze, you can actually see. I wonder if you saw that. Did you see that? Will I do it again? The water actually drips out. There. There there so even the tiniest little squeeze is going to put a huge blob on your paper and if you're doing a picture that's completely in watercolor there's absolutely nothing wrong with that it's fine however if you do a pencil drawing and you're just wanting to sort of accentuate and you know like mash out and lighten some of your colors this isn't ideal if you're doing a whole watercolor painting i think it would be great unfortunately that's not the case for me okay let's have a go with the black now Let's have a go with the black. Now that's nearly dry, so I should be able to go right up there without any any disasters. The black looks strange. I don't know. I don't think it looks the same. It looks black on the camera, but when I'm looking at this in the daylight, it looks kind of greenish. And again, I don't have that problem with the the Faber Castell uh, Polychromos, but hey, hey ho. That's quite intense as well. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. These pencils are lovely. They're, the colour is it is really vibrant. And I know most of them will say that anyway, just for, you know, for the hell of it. But that's, yeah, that's quite good. And you can, again, if you're using this type of paper, you can wait until it dries and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to put more on the top. I'm just going to try down here because this is completely dry because it's not um, particularly you know, particularly heavy pencil and I didn't put a lot of water on. But let's see if I can pop that, where is it going? Pop this colour down here. Yeah, so I, yeah, that you can draw over the top of that. That's not, that's not going to cause any issues. That's fine. So it'll be interesting to see now what happens when I wet this again, whether it disturbs what's dried underneath or whether it stays put and just squishes along the top. Mm. It's not moving the blue underneath. There you go. Now that I've done that bit at the side, that's me going right over the top of that. And you can see that my original blue line is still very much there. So that's quite good as well, that that's holding fast. So you can build up some layers and you know that your what you've done underneath isn't going to start moving about. Okay, that's real interesting. 
Well then. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you was my the, the Statler eraser, wasn't it? I'm going to move this out of the way. Oh, oh wow. Pop that over there. Okay. So, sorry guys, I keep bumping that camera. I'm going to end up giving someone some kind of motion sickness. As I said before, this is my one of these uh, that's just a lot older. I'm not going to open this one. This can go in the, the spares box. The, these pencil lines are drawn with the Mars Lumograph pencil that came in the box. So just to show you how good they are. Now that is a 4B pencil and I'm just going to take a couple of scrubs straight through that middle part there and you can see that it's taken away a considerable amount of that. I'm going to try one of these dark lines down here and really like go for it. There we go. So you can, there is a tiny mark there, but that is actually my indentation on the paper with the pencil. It's not, <laughs> it's not actually pencil that's left in it. So, yeah, these are great. If you, even if you're just doodling and you know you like to scribble about like I do, then yeah, I, I really like these erasers. And also as well, when they start to get a bit mucky, you can rub that on, on almost any surface and it will take it off. In behind this craft mat, my desk is wooden and it's just a plain, I don't know why I'm touching it because you can't see it if I do that. Ooh, but I can literally go like this and it takes it all off. So yeah, I really like these erasers. Did I say that already? I think I might have. I need to put this back straight now. Oh, that's about straight as it's going to get. Okay. So there you have it, guys. That is this month's scroller box. Just to recap, I'm going to pop all these back in. Probably not in the right order. Just to recap, we have the Faber-Castell uh, Gold Faber, Gold Faber Aqua Pencils. We have the Statler Mars Lumograph 4B Pencil. We have the Statler Mars Plastic Eraser, which I absolutely love. And we have the Faber-Castell water brush which if you are a watercolour artist I think is going to be fabulous if you're someone like me who's useless with stuff like that it's uh, it requires quite a bit of skill and control which I do not have so yeah maybe not maybe not maybe not and last but not least the Statler graphite pencil sharpener our prompt quiet morning sticker sweetie and the artwork from the featured artist and last but not least the paper which uh, yeah we'll, we'll use for the scroller challenge I feel so there you have it that is your 15 pounds worth for the month of February and I think that is absolutely outstanding particularly the fact these pencils are a lot better and a lot nicer than I thought they were going to be I don't know where they are in the pecking order compared to the other Faber-Castell pencils. I do have a set of uh, uh, Albert Durer pencils, which I've only just acquired, which is ironic really, isn't it, that these came in my scroller box. So maybe, maybe I'll do a comparison between the two in another video. That sounds like a good idea. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing today. I will be doing the scroller challenge at some point, which I will upload when I have finished so that you can see what I did with it. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the basement in the comments section. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. That would be really nice of you. And if you're still curious or you just like to listen to me rambling on, you can always subscribe. Tell your friends, do whatever. It's all cool with me. Thanks very much for spending the time with me and I'll see you soon in the colouring cave.